In this session we're going to look at the select query. We're also going to be investigating the distinct query, distinct row query, and having a look at the difference between those. So first of all we're actually going to open up an existing query. So I'm going to double click this. When you double click a query that's already pre-existing it runs it in its runtime mode. We can actually go up to the view and if we click on this view here, this is the query by example where the field names are listed, but we're more concerned at the moment with the SQL. You notice that in this version of SQL in Microsoft, um, it starts with a distinct row. It's also got table.code. What that means is this name here, um, table stock. So it's got table stock dot code. And what it's referencing is this table, this field. So if we had a database with multiple tables, we can reference the different fields in different tables by actually pointing at them. And then in our from statement, we can actually list the tables at which these fields above come from, even though we've identified them with the dot. So let's run this SQL at the moment. You'll see that it gives us all the codes and all the pack sizes. So just to head back in the SQL, to prove that it still works the same, we're going to remove out all the tables or the field table reference. You notice that fields are actually separated by the comma. So I have one field here called code, comma, pack. And I can still run this query. And I still get the same results at the bottom with 57 return. So what is happening at the moment is we're using the distinct row. What that means is if there is a row within the search criteria, which is in this case all the fields, if they are unique, so in other words something in this row is unique, it will display it. So what actually happens if we run just distinct and not distinct row? Let's run this query now. You notice that we have 57 um, results, but I want to change this around a little bit and actually say because every code we know is, dis is unique. Let's just have a look at the pack size. So we will start with distinct row which means if something in the row is unique, e.g. the codes are all unique, that means we should get 57 results. And that's what we get. So let's have a look now in the SQL view, what happens when we just say distinct. So in other words, if it's there and it's unique, e.g. 6 and 12, we shouldn't get that multiple repetition. So I'm going to hit the run. And you see there are pack sizes now of 1, 6, 12, and 24. If we look at the raw table behind, you can see there is a 6. You can see there is 12s. There is a 24. Lots of 12. And because we've just used distinct, it's done a bit of a grouping for us. So every time there is a unique occurrence, e.g. a number like 12, it appears. So we can change the data around and get more. But what we need to have a look at next is, well, what happens if we remove distinct and just have select pack? So in this case here, we're saying just select the packs and show me what they are. So when I run it now, we can actually see all the pack sizes and you see they're in order of what this table is. If we want to see something else in the table, e.g. like wholesale price, which is WSP, is the field name, we can actually add that to our select list, go comma, WSP, and when we run the query now, we not only see the pack size, but we also see the wholesale price. Now when we perform a select query, it does it in rank order. It look, this is our primary field, this is our secondary field. So this is the first, second, third. If I swap those around, they'll appear with whole, so if I had wholesale price first, that'll be the first column, then pack size will be in the second column. So from this tutorial, we've actually looked at how a distinct row works, how distinct works, and how just a straight query that is on screen now works in the Access Database platform.